Hi, Armored Pants here. I have another beginner's guide for you. This one to heavy tanks or to be the tip of the spear because that in effect is what a heavy tank should be. Now, um, the heavy tank is one of the easier tank types to play in that um, it's slower, therefore it's more difficult to get yourself into trouble, particularly if you're a new player. But that said, there are nuances to it and you do understand, need to understand the basics um, to play it well. So let's talk about heavy tanks. As I said, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's uh, the easiest tank type to play, but that does not mean that it is easy. It's just a little bit easier than the others. You need to know the theory and the skills if you're going to be a, um, a good heavy tank player. You're slow, um, slower than other types of tanks, and you but you will have heavy armor. So what does this mean? Um, well, we're going to look at that in a little bit later on, but you also have a big gun with a slower rate uh, reload slower rate of fire which you tend to do more damage per shell you have more hit points bigger hit point pool you're hard to kill any of you have come across a kv1 coming up through the ranks of tier 4 and that will know exactly what i'm talking about so what does all this mean what is your role in the game well the good news is it's all going to be explained here essentially you are the tip of the spear your job is to take the fight to the heart of the enemy if you're sitting behind, not uh, moving, you're not doing your job. You basically should punch through, you should break through enemy lines, much as tanks did um, throughout history, as used by Rommel, etc. in the Second World War, in the Second World War. Um, also, your job is to take strategic points to capture them, and there are strategic points on every map that you play. And if you can capture them, you should hold the enemy in a fixed position and do not let them punch through, and do not let them capture those strategic points. Now, that's all well and good. Now let's look into the theory in a bit more detail. Now, what is behind these ideas? So, as I said, um, what is a heavy tank and how to play it? Um, so, let's describe a heavy tank as a mobile castle. What do we mean by this? Well, it's a common misconception in history that castles are defensive. They are not. Castles were built um, to be um, offensive. They were built to secure strategic points on a landscape and to strategize, uh, seize those positions, for example, on hills, bends and rivers, etc., and to put pressure on um, the enemy. They were not defensive. In fact, usually when attacked, the local populace was left outside to be killed. Once in place, the castle is difficult to displace, right? Um, hence, sieges, castle attacks, etc. But castles are, in fact, in effect, offensive um, and have been through history. What if you were to put that castle on tracks? If you could move it, um, as in chess, for example, and we do with the um, with the rook, which of course is the castle. Um, in Blitz, heavies are mobile castles. They're used to seize strategic positions to go into strategic positions on the map. And if you remember this, if you have this image in your head, then that will um, enable you to use your heavy tank correctly. You are that mobile tracked castle. Now let's look into this in a bit more detail um, and expand upon this theory. Uh, so let's just say this is a map. Any map in Blitz. They're all basically um, uh, this uh, square rectangular figure, right? If you look on the mini map. And on every one of these maps, the heavy tank has a role. Now let's take a blank map here because it doesn't really matter which map it is that we're looking at. Um, but there are strategic positions. So let's say it is to gain um, the middle ground on the right hand side of the map, which is a key fulcrum point on the map. Um, this um, is a position where you want to stop the enemy taking, and this is a position that you want to gain for yourselves. Heavy tank's role then is to move towards this strategic position in the hope of seizing it. Um, you may be able to seize it if the other heavy tanks do not move there. If the other heavy tanks move there, then what is your role? Well, it's not to seize it, um, unless you arrive there first, of course, but it is to stop the enemy from seizing it. Therefore, when the enemy heavy tanks arrive, um, your job is to engage with them, um, to stop them pushing through, and to enable uh, your team to have a chance to win the battle. So here we have a position where the enemy tanks have arrived and they're facing on to you. 
and your job is to hold them. This is a favourite tactic of the great generals in history, Hannibal Barca uh, in particular, Alexander the Great also, who described his infantry, his heavy infantry as the anvil, and his cavalry, which in the case of this game is light tanks and medium tanks, as the anvil. So if you can imagine you will hold the enemy in place and hopefully your team will come in behind um, and smash them from behind. So basically you are acting as a fulcrum, your heavy tank is holding the enemy in position, not enabling them to punch through and to flank you, giving your team time, your light and medium tanks to come around to flank and to come up behind to clear any tank destroyers and then come up behind the enemy heavy tanks. And that in effect is the perfect blitz game. Heavy tank goes, engages. Um, light tanks and medium tanks come around, flank, clear tank destroyers, come up behind the heavies, kill them. What if you move to that strategic position and there is no heavies, the heavies have all gone the other way? Well then your job is to move forward to the next strategic position. And of course depending on the map, it's where that would be. It may be different, but you need to decide that based on the map. Now, let's take the heavy tank role. If you are engaged with the enemy face on and you are holding them in position, what do you need to do? Well, you need to damage them, but key, you need to bounce shots. You need to stop yourself receiving damage. So therefore, one of the key skills in driving a heavy tank and being a heavy tank player is blocking damage. So let's have a look at blocking damage in a bit more detail. Let's look at some angling mechanics because this is the key to blocking damage. Let's take this green um, block here and let's say that this is a typical plate of armor. Let's say it's 90 millimeters thick. The enemy fires a shell at it which is 120 millimeters of pen straight at it and it goes straight through because 120 is bigger than 90 and it goes straight through. So let's angle that armor plate. The enemy fires now his 120 millimeter penning shell at your 90 millimeter armor plate but it bounces why because the armor at this angle is actually thicker than 90 millimeters and therefore the shell comes at it it can't pen because the uh, armor is now thicker than its 120 millimeters of penetration and it goes straight through and uh, sorry it goes uh, bounces and if you don't believe me have a look at this this is the original um, thickness of the armor and look at the this look at the delta the difference between uh, its original thickness and now its actual thickness, its relative thickness to the shell. See, that's how it bounces. Explained very simply. Now, let's look again. Um, that was all very well um, if he's firing at the side, but the front of your tank is still vulnerable, right? Again, let's put back in the original thickness of the armor and you will see that he is easily going to pen you. He has lots of space to pen you. So even though the side of your tank is now protected from that angle, the front of your tank is still very vulnerable and an experienced player will put the round into the front of the tank. This is where side scraping comes in. You use the angling theory, but now we have something in front of us. Let's say this house or any building. Inexperienced players will come out side on like this. And again, it's the first example, the 90 millimeter ship, 90 millimeter uh, armor plate gets pierced by the 120 millimeter um, shell and it goes straight through it and uh, that's why you don't come out side on now when you know how to angle you actually can come up straight onto the house like this and now you are side scraping uh, when this shell fires down he is looking at a really thick piece of armor look at that look at the uh, delta the difference between how thick your armor was and how thick it is now when you're lined up massive difference and that shell is going to bounce all day long look how relatively thick your armor is now when you want to fire you come out at this angle and um, so you reverse out at this angle giving him an obtuse angle to fire at again he fires straight at you and uh, the front of your tank is protected this is the only thing he can fire at and again the shell bounces because Let's put back in the original armor. We see there is a massive difference between how thick the armor is now in effect versus its actual thickness. Look at this massive difference. And that's why the shell bounces. Now, let's have a look at this in practice. Um, this is me in uh, my E75. And look, I angle up and then I bounce that shot. Um, and that's from an ST1, by the way, which has a massive gun. So this is a big gun with lots of pen. Um, and in this sequence, I uh, bounce two shots from again. I reverse up. I see him coming again. 
So now I angle, I angle, he fires again, and bounces again. So this is side scraping. I am creating the angles with my tank to give him this obtuse angle, increasing the effective thickness of my armor, um, and I'm also protecting the front of my tank. In this case, I don't have a house in front of me, but I have rocks, but anything will do, anything that stops him firing. And there we are, there's the first bounce. Again, I'm moving back now. I know he's reloading, so he can't do anything to me, so I come out and I put a shot into the ISA. Again, this is something um, when you're in these positions to look at. Uh, always see if you can put a round into the cupola. So I am minimizing my exposure. I'm not coming straight out to put one through the lower plate. I'm just putting one into the cupola. So I'm really frustrating the enemy here. I am holding three or four enemy tanks up. I've just captured the base, as you can see behind me. Now I'm angling up again, going into side scrape. He fires again. And he misses, uh, well he doesn't miss, he actually hits me of course, but the it bounces. And that is the theory that we just looked at in practice. And as you can see, the angle I was taking with my tanks is exactly the angle I showed you with the blocks in the previous uh, illustration. Here I am straight on as we um, showed in the second example of side scraping. And I'm coming out, I'm straight on. Now this big, this Yag Tiger is a big gun. He fires at me. Um, but I'm presenting him with that uh, obtuse angle and that shot bounces straight off the side of my armor and that allows me to put a round into the W set straight in front of me. Now the Yag Tiger is very very frustrated at this point so he decides to swap up to HE to see if he can get some splash damage on me because HE shots don't bounce and you'll see when I come out again he fires a HE round into me and he does a little bit of damage you know but I mean for a Yag Tiger uh, that sort of 100 plus roll is, in, is, is inconsequential. It doesn't really make any difference to me and I clear the WZ. And in effect, he also is so frustrated that he actually fires a round and you can see the uh, puff of masonry there on the side of the building. Now let's have a look at safe capture. Safe capture, what is this? Well, when you are playing in Supremacy, the strategic points that you should be grabbing are the bases. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to do a safer or safer style of capture using the theory that we've just looked at from side scraping and angling to show how you can capture bases with a minimum risk to yourself. So here I am and um, I'm going to base C and four to spare and what I'm doing is if you look at the position I have in the tank here I am capturing the base but also I'm using all the theory that we looked at in the angling and side scraping to make sure that I am almost 100% safe here anybody firing a shell at me there it's gonna bounce again I do exactly the same thing here in Tiger War and um, again as a heavy tank my job is to see strategic points and in this supremacy map strategic points are the bases so I move in and if we look here, the position I'm adopting, again, classic uh, side scraping position that um, we looked at in the theory. And we looked at with the uh, E75, the, and now we're looking at again here. Um, so I am just uh, looking up the street, I have perfect side scraping position. Any tank that comes along and fires down at me is going to bounce shots because I'm giving this a obtuse angle, making my armor in effect thicker and allows me to capture the base. Um, with minimum risk of receiving any damage. Now, while blocking damage is very important, inflicting damage is also very important, and deflection shooting is something you're going to have to know how to do with heavy tanks. This is something developed in World War One by pilots and perfected in World War Two. What is it? Well, we're gonna. I have a, more details about what deflection shooting is in the tank destroyer guide. But you also need to know it for heavy tanks because the very nature of heavy tanks is you will be engaging the enemy from distance sometimes so you have to know how to do flexion shooting. Now I'm in a tier 5 heavy here to VK 301H. Um, I've looked at the setup at the tanks on my team and on the red team and I decided that we need to seize the center of the town because I believe that most of the action is going to happen on the left hand side where the meds and light tanks will try to capture this strategic point which is the hill on the left hand side in the middle of the map and sure enough they are there now let's have a look at this Panzer IV now that looks like a fairly straightforward shot but it isn't uh, this is a deflection shot and let's have a look at it in slow motion so deflection shooting is effectively firing into the space that the enemy tank will occupy 
rather than firing into the space he's currently in. So you saw there in the replay, what I did was I fired at the front of his tank while he was moving, and therefore the shell hit the back of the tank. That was not such a long distance, if it was over a further distance you have to fire even in front of the tank. Um, so basically your shell, even though it moves very quickly, is still um, not instantaneously arriving where you want it to be, so therefore you have to gauge that and fire slightly in front of fast moving targets. Again, if we look here to T34, T34 is a fast moving target, um, and that looks again like just a standard shot, but it actually was not, and we're going to slow it right down here, going to look at it 10% speed. So, firstly, and this is in many ways is a very, very good example of a deflection shot, what I am doing is I am uh, tracking him. Firstly, I'm going to see where he is, what he's doing. So I'm tracking him with my um, aiming circle. Now, um, he's taken a shot from um, my allies. Now, I know he's going to move forward onto them. Now I zoom in. We can see that um, um, he is going to move forward now any moment. So if I uh, fire directly um, at the center, I will miss because when my shell arrives, he will have moved forward. So what I do is I drag the aiming circle forward in front of him so it's in front of him now then I fire and that's the kill um, and that basically is deflection shooting in a nutshell and it's something if you don't already know how to do if you're beginning to play the game it's something you need to practice and perfect and um, because um, this will enable you to um, hurt the enemy from distance um, and it's important because hurting the enemy is as important as blocking damage now Let's have a look at all of this uh, theory in action in this game, and particularly now um, the strategic point that I capture. I have looked at the setup, the reds list and the green list, and I decided I need to go hell for leather. I used the accelerator to get to this strategic point here in this map. Um, now on this occasion, their heavies have not tried to take it, so I captured this strategic point, and this is a dominant position on this map. As you can see, I can fire down into the center here, this Matilda. Um, I have a good position where I can just stick in at my turret so I can block damage from him. And I've got excellent field of fire down to the center and to the right here I've got multiple fire channels. And by capturing this position I've actually neutralized this um, sniping position on this map for their SU. You probably often be on this map and other maps and you are getting smashed from somewhere um, in the back by a tank destroyer like this SU and you've no idea why. And it's generally because um, you have not seized those uh, strategic positions um, as I've done here. So you can see by capturing that position I've been able to neutralize that firing point which could have been quite dangerous for us. If we had nobody in this position that SU would have remained unspotted and just farmed damage. As it is though we neutralized that and actually cleared him. Now I'm moving again to support my enemy. I again I'm going to come to the tip of the spear moving to engage the enemy using my armor and my gun and I'm the spearhead again. I've moved up to a safe position here that I can dominate. I protect it um, to the front and to the left um, and I've also split the enemy a bit. Now we have an almost full hit points uh, Panzer IV coming in here I, but the fact that I moved forward um, allowed me now to put huge damage into him and farming damage and actually I eventually clear him. If I had stayed at the back hadn't moved forward, hadn't become the spear tip again, I would not have been able to do this and we may have lost this game because we're actually, when I move forward, we're a tank down. But now I've cleared off one of their dangerous tanks. Now I notice I'm in a crossfire because the AT is pushing up so I cannot hold this position so I decide to move on, not before I get around and be in the back side for my troubles. I snap a shot off him, it was never going to work with a T14 gun. Now I'm trying to find a new um, uh, position with cover and um, because heavy tanks need cover and I need to be able to um, block damage so I'm going to hell for a letter here and um, to get into position um, and I, I just about reach these rocks in time and now what I now I can regroup and now I can side scrape on the fly I can improvise and I can get into a side scraping position let's slow it down here to look at how I position the tank and again, this is more or less perfect side scraping position. Wolverine is coming on to me. It's a tank destroyer, it has a very, very good gun, lots of pen. But because I have perfect side scraping position, I bounce that shot. 
I'm able to put that round into him. And, and actually I'm able to clear him. Now, besides grabbing, uh, let's think about this again in terms of game philosophy. Um, now as I said to you before, a good way to look at this game, which keeps you honest and keeps you a team player, is that when your total accumulated hit pool point reaches zero, you lose the game. Conversely, when the enemy's total accumulated hit pool point reaches zero, they lose the game. So my actions here have a double whammy effect on that. Um, in that it's like scoring a goal and saving a goal at the same time. Because when I put a round into him, I'm reducing the enemy's total accumulated hit pool point uh, points. When I block damage, I'm actually conserving my team's hit pool point total. Not just my own, but that of my team as well. So therefore, this is why it's so key. It's not just about doing damage, blocking damage has an equal effect as doing damage because if you look on the if you look on the way um, of this hit pool point accumulation it makes a lot of sense right now knowing your tank knowing the enemy tanks absolutely nope I do not want to engage an AT2 like that. By the way this is something that will happen in all tiers of the game. For example in tier 10 if you're coming front onto a mouse or an E100 you definitely do not want to be engaging with a mouse front on so you need to understand your tank and your enemy tank. Um, so I decided to come around behind him and um, I'm just going to put APCR into him because my gun on the T14 is not so reliable um, in, uh, especially when I'm against a tough customer like the AT2 and you know I just uh, hunt for um, uh, premium shots at these people that's why they're loaded up if you've got to use them you know. Um, people will often criticize you for that, but that's usually when they've just been killed, so um, I would just put that to a side and put it down to being bad losers. Um, APCR is in the game for a reason, so use it. Now, this um, game, I think, was nothing spectacular, first class master or whatever, but I think it was a very good summary of all the key points that we looked at in heavy tank play. Seizing a strategic position, um, opening up fields of fire, moving to support the enemy, being the tip of the spearhead, side scraping, blocking damage and inflicting damage on the enemy. So um, in many ways it's a perfect summary of heavy tank play. Now let's have a recap and look at the um, key points. So heavy tank, you are the spear tip, it is a vital role in your team and if you don't do it it's highly unlikely your team is going to win. Um, you have armor for a reason, use it, you are there to engage the enemy. If you are not engaging the enemy, if you are hiding somewhere at the back of the, back of the map, you are not doing your job. Um, I will repeat this, engaging the enemy is key to heavy tank play, that's why the game gives you armor. You are also the castle, you need to move into those key positions and s secure them for your team or stop the enemy from seizing them. If you are not doing that again, you are not doing your job and you are not helping your team. You need to know how to block damage. You need to understand angling and side scraping. They are key skills for heavy tank players. So please look again, if you're not, not familiar, look again at the tutorial at the start of this because I think it explains it very simply. You need to make your shots count. Take your time and also think about using the enemy's reload to take your time. If he's reloading, he can't shoot you, especially if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You need to learn deflection shooting and um, because you will fight from distance on occasion and watch the map and move when required. In the game with the T14 you saw, if I had stayed where I was I wouldn't have been able to take out that Panzer IV. So you need to move and this is a, this is a judgement call. But watch the mini map, it will help you make that decision because you need to bring the fight to the enemy. That's why you are a heavy. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. Um, I know there's a lot of information in, the game, in it but please watch again if, if you need to. Okay, thanks for watching, take care, cheers much, see you now, bye.